a world-class therapist in England or California will charge you at least 140 per hour, which is about 10 times as much as this little psychotherapeutic book by Viktor Frankl, and roughly the equivalent price of these 10 incredible therapeutic resources which cover the whole range of trauma therapy and self-healing. But my question to you is, does price equal value? Obviously not. And if you had to pick between the two, my controversial opinion, especially as someone whose financial livelihood depends 100% on direct one-to-one -one therapeutic support and providing coaching and teaching, is to go with the books every single time. Therapy need not be expensive and you need not go to a professional to get significantly measurable results in your healing and your happiness and your fulfillment and reason for sticking around on this earth. Ultimately, I think that we are our own healers. All that we can ever do in a therapeutic space is be given the tools and reflections and trust and support and safety and fundamentally a hell of a lot of psychoeducation to be able to make better choices about how we treat ourselves and unravel the past. Of course, I'm simplifying, but the point of this video is not just to hold up Viktor Frankl and these other books which I recommend that you read. It's to make a point, and the point, ultimately, is that you only need two things to make therapy work for yourself. Uninterrupted time and uninterrupted focus. Because if you're willing to commit to that auto-therapeutic, self-educating pathway for at least one year, your results will be far, far greater than the person who simply shows up to therapy, no matter how incredible that therapist might be. So let me break it down a little bit to try and re-illustrate with as much strength as possible why time and focus are worth more than professional support. Let's go with a common example. Typically, therapy is one hour per week for about 50 weeks per year. Of course, I'm simplifying. This is a standard model. Let's go with the example. One hour per week for 50 weeks of the year. That's 50 hours of direct therapeutic contact. In a single month, we have four hours. And let's say that we have one hour of practice or homework or journaling or something that the therapist has asked, asked us to do in that week in between sessions. We've got eight hours right there. So eight hours per month spent in therapeutic space, spent in that therapeutic self-investigatory kind of mentality and experiencing, re-experiencing in some cases, quite tragically, all of those dark emotions and working through them and moving towards integration. Fantastic. Bloody fantastic. I am all here for it and I am so pleased that I have grown up into adulthood in an era where mental health is not stigmatized, it's publicly spoken about, it's very much mainstream, but the challenge that we're facing right now is that with the invention of very readily accessible therapeutic supports, I'm not going to name any company in particular, but there's a certain company that talks about therapy via the smartphone, and that being super casual, super chill, drop a therapist whenever you feel like it, I think we're running into a risky over-exaggeration of how much therapy can provide for us. What I want to counter is a realistic perspective for someone who doesn't need to spend the money if they can prioritize the time. With traditional therapy, be this talk therapy, behavior therapy, Jungian therapy, any kind of somatic therapy, whatever you want, you're probably doing no more than eight hours per month of therapeutic work. The average nonfiction book for an intelligent adult is roughly 300 pages, six to eight hour experience. It'll take you probably about six to eight hours to read a book by Alexander Lowen and really engage with it. If you take all 10 of these books, I'll hold them up again in case you didn't see them on the camera the first time round. I highly recommend that you read all of them. If we take six to eight hours for 10 books, that's 60 to 80 hours to go through there. Hopefully that comes up on the camera. You can screenshot this and I recommend that you buy at least three. And if not, well, I've got an entire series that has 52 direct suggestions, so click on over to that wherever it might be on the screen. A lot of these are featured with full episodes. 60 to 80 hours of focused therapeutic introspective time. And it's not just about the reading. 
if you're truly engaging in material, you're not only spending a considerably longer amount of time, considerably more frequent amount of time being exposed to therapeutic healing in a genuinely meaningful way, you'll also be doing the practices, you'll also be doing the journaling. In my one-to-one -one work, my minimum expectation for any client that I work with is that they're going to spend at least 90 minutes per day reading and doing the homework that we've established between sessions, the accountability work. This will look like a reading list. This will look like journaling. It might be dream journaling sometimes. It could just be a variety of exercises and practices. But usually it's a lot of physical work as well. There might be somatic bioenergetic work. There might be certain rituals or practices or certain fitness goals even or health goals or whatever it might be. It's a constant immersive experience to work with me. And I love this about the therapeutic space because I think that's what's needed for genuine transformative change. In my opinion, as someone who's maybe a little bit intense and maybe gone through a darker experience internally than most people, not that I'm a special snowflake, we've all got our trauma. I'm sure you're at this point of watching me, you're likewise in that place where you've been through some shit and working through some shit. You can't do two hours per week and expect change. 90 minutes per day is my minimum, and most clients that I work with will do two or three hours per day. One hour in the morning, one hour in the evening, that would be great, 90 minutes in the morning, one hour in the evening, maybe an extended focus session on Saturday or Sunday for five or six hours. It's not just reading. It's not just being in contact with some of the greatest minds and greatest healers that have ever walked this planet and devaluing the fact that, I mean, I've just noticed this, it's not even $15 or £15. I got this second hand, hopefully you can see it. For two quid. Viktor Frankl, in your pocket, for two quid. It's unbelievable how much we're overlooking the value of genuinely masterful teachers. And not only that, we're overlooking the value of undistracted, focused attention. I personally despise audiobooks. I don't think they're a substitute, at least not a substitute in this sense, for an accurate, genuinely meaningful therapeutic self-experience over time. I think they're good for getting information in, but oftentimes with an audiobook, you'll be multitasking. You'll be doing something else. You'll be cooking, you'll be going for a walk, you'll be going to the gym, you'll be driving your car, and for some people this works. But if you're genuinely in the shit, it's not encouraging enough because there's not enough hours spent, there's not enough skin in the game. You need to have pen, paper, highlight, physicality, undistractable attention to get the most out of therapeutic self-intervention. 60 to 80 hours for those 10 books. Something which someone, if they're really dedicated, can achieve in one single month. When I work with people, they go from reading maybe a book a month to finishing anywhere between 8 to 14 books in the first month that we're together. Because the pressure's on and I expect them to do that because I set the standard highly for what they can achieve for themselves. And amazing things happen six weeks in when they realize that they have rewired their unconscious, not just through the work that we've been doing together, not just through the reading that they've been doing in their own time, but crucially, that swimming in the therapeutic space. You wake up and you read, you're thinking about it throughout the day, you're journaling, journaling a little bit on your phone when you're on your lunch break, you come back, you have a practice, you read, and you repeat this for four months, that's what it's like to work with me. I think it's a mis-selling of the outcome to believe that a one-hour therapy session, even with an excellent therapist, could provide anywhere near the results of time spent in your own conscious therapeutic container. That's one month right there of really focused work. Even if you were only going to do two hours per day of work, two hours per day for 365 days, just one year of healing. My mathematics isn't the best, but it's over 700 hours. 700 hours versus the 50 hours of professional therapeutic intervention. Ideally, hopefully it goes without saying, you do both. I'm still holding on to Viktor Frankl. I'm clutching on to him for dear life, and I'm sure he's someone worth clutching to. His existential logotherapy is a pretty good therapy to research and complementary to 
the humanistic and transpersonal and somatic therapies I'm holding up here. It's a complex conversation. And the reason that I'm having this conversation isn't just to shit on therapy, because I am someone who works therapeutically, and it isn't just to say, read the books. We need more than that. We need the focus itself. The focus itself is the healing element. I cannot emphasize this enough. We are bombarded, oversaturated, and completely bedazzled by screens and way too much stimulation way too often. To have a sacred practice in the morning or the evening or some time in the day where you completely unplug and you go into genuinely healing space with an intention to love yourself better and figure out why things are still painful, every single day that gradually tilts you away from wanting quick, easy, sugary dopamine distractions of whatever variety you're prone to, and the same with addiction recovery and coming away from substances. What do I want to say to wrap this video up? I actually do want to say that this is still a question and answer video, even though I haven't brought up the question from Anthony. I'm saving it till the end. Anthony asked me this question, and the reason I've led into it this way is because, well, you'll find out. Anthony asks, Is there a difference between my purple and yellow marker highlights in the book? He knows there must be a reason for it. What he's referring to is this. So what I do when I'm reading is I go like that. I will have two highlighters in any book that I'm reading, and on first appearance, it looks like I've got a very clever strategy for retaining lots and lots of information so that I will truly be a big brain individual, his integral psychology, literally falling apart, who has something like a strategy for masterful learning. And the reality is, Anthony, it's just to keep myself from getting bored. The reason I use two highlighters is to create a more engaging tactile experience and visual experience to carry my momentum as I read for multiple hours in a row. For the last three years or so, I have been reading for three to four hours every morning. Some mornings I don't, but more or less every single morning for at least that much time. And that gets boring. That does get genuinely boring, even if I've got music on, often I'll be Standing as I read a book, I'll be like moving around, I'll be doing this, I'll be, I'm not going to squat down because you won't see me, but I'll get into squats, I'll get into nice flows, sometimes I'll sit in strange positions. But that's not enough to keep my body engaged while my mind's also whirring. I will have two highlighters because it is a much more engaging experience to take one colour and then as the idea changes, you then take the other colour. Because I'm not aiming for anything more than 10% retention which is sometimes a shocking thing for people to hear when I say it for the first time. I don't aim for speed reading. I don't aim for learning everything that I read the first time round. My first encounter with a book is to aim for 10% information retention, because the reality of having a hard copy book, like The Primal Wound, is that this book lives on the bookshelf, and if I want to reread it, I go to the bookshelf and I pick it back up and I aim to push that percentage of retention to maybe 20% with a second read where I go onto my laptop and I type the notes. And then I might get to 30 or 35% as I work through some ideas with a client and maybe get to 40% if I'm lucky as I teach on a video. Don't aim for 100% retention. Don't get perfectionistic with your focus. The point is to allow for flow, uninterrupted time, uninterrupted focus, you put those together, you've got the present moment, and you've got a flow state. The key for being autotherapeutic, in my opinion, in my strong conviction, is to spend as much time as you possibly can to the detriment of the world around you for a certain period of time. Do it respectfully, of course. Don't go and burn bridges unnecessarily, but really strong boundaries and real honest priority setting when it comes to defending that space to flow through the therapeutic sea. You need to spend time swimming in those new perspectives. You need time to digest. You need time, time, and time. It's not enough to do one hour a week. It's not enough to do two hours a week. You need to do at least that every day because I guarantee as someone who's worked through a lot of internal shit, 
I started feeling suicidal at age 10. I mentioned that on a few videos and I carried that with me for 12 years and I've had my own challenges and trials along the way, but I'm not going to make it about me. You will feel intense and you will feel obsessive. If you can channel that into something which is good for you, you will benefit. It's really as simple as hours in, out comes out. If you're focused and the focus will gradually improve as you strip away the old narrative of being constantly distractible. Turn your phone off, put it on airplane mode. Don't share on Instagram that you've just read an incredible paragraph from The Primal Wound until you've finished reading the chapter and ideally finished reading the book. A lot of the books that I read, I will go a year or more before I even talk about them because it hasn't been appropriate. This is an idea that we discovered in a previous episode, a few episodes ago, about appropriate context in regards to being a normal person in everyday society. Don't trauma dump. Don't spill over into unnecessarily intense conversations with strangers about the deep psychological truths of the universe and your latest spiritual awakening. If you've got a steady practice for yourself, every single day you will be so self-fulfilled and auto-therapeutic that you won't need to do that and you will stop immaturely looking for therapists in every room that you enter because you are your own therapist. I'm someone who works in this role professionally full-time and I do not want you to work with me before you've done the legwork to read the books for yourself because when I come to work with you at that point where you've done this for a few months, we can work in collaboration. I can get someone like Ken Wilber to help you out on Tuesday, Stanislav Groff, he can come and visit your house on Wednesday, we've got John Rowan, if you're a man or a woman healing the male psyche, he's going to pop around for lunch on a Friday and then we're going to meet on a Saturday. And you've just met some of the best minds in the therapeutic space. We can do so much more together. Of course, ideally, to be autotherapeutic and receive external therapeutic support is the golden sweet spot. It's something that I encourage and try to cultivate in my own practice. It's what I really believe works the best. Because just like studying at university, you can show up for the one-hour lecture or the seminar, but unless you've done the preparatory reading, you will not be able to see what is gold and what is bronze and what is straight up sludge and pick out that which is relevant to nourish yourself. You might be caught up on a very true looking idea, perhaps something that you see on Instagram and you'll cling to it for lack of awareness of what exists around that idea. And tragically this in our age means a complete lack of awareness for these books written between roughly 1920 and 1990. That's kind of the sweet spot for really good therapeutic literature. I'm getting a bit ranty, so I will wrap it all up into a single point. Anthony, why do I highlight my books? It's to keep myself in a flow state. A flow state for me is about uninterrupted time, undistractable focus, and staying in the place where I truly, truly engage with the material because there's nothing else for me to do. I let the boundary of my day really hold back the rest of the world and responsibilities. I have a lot of people messaging me every day. At any time, I'll have anywhere between four and five personal clients and I'll be available. And yet still, I take three days completely off Instagram every single week and have done for multiple months because this is still what matters to me. I'm still healing on my own journey. I'm significantly further than I was before. And now my major research points is actually looking towards places where I could better serve a client. But I still need that practice. Because it's not just about reading that book, which I've already read in some other form 20 different times. It's about the flow state and it's about the focus. Happiness really does depend, in my opinion, on consistent access to flow states which feel meaningful to you. Of course, we shouldn't just aim for happiness and flow at the detriment of all else. But I hope the point is salient nonetheless. How much do you need to do? It depends on your capacity, but I would not say aim low. Set yourself a high standard. Forget what it was like to read at school. I had a client recently who I'm still working with, and they were not a good student at high school by their own admission, and they had read very few books. I think we're now five months in? Four and a half months. Four and a half months in, she's done an extension, a one-month extension, and she's read 35 books, to my awareness. Might be a little bit more, might be a little bit less. 
How do you go from a D-grade student who doesn't enjoy reading to reading this ferociously and in such an engaged way? You get yourself out of the way and you absorb the information while not aiming perfectionistically for 100% retention. You swim. You swim in that space. A therapeutic container is a wonderful place to make that for you, but truly you can make it for yourself. You are your own therapist. You have the power inside yourself to heal. You do not need an external mommy or daddy figure to give you the golden keys to your own kingdom or queendom. You really have all of that inside of you, but it will take many hundreds of hours to find exactly where that key is buried. But you can do it. I'll leave it there. Next episode in the series, we're going to be talking about more inner work. Surprise, surprise, it's what every video is about. I'll see you over there.